Hi everyone, AWS WAF adds support for custom responses. This means that in a block rule action with custom response enabled, you can instruct AWS WAF to send a custom HTTP response back to the client. Previously, AWS WAF could only return HTTP status code 403 forbidden when the user request was blocked by AWS WAF. With this feature of custom responses support, you can configure AWS WAF to send out a different HTTP status code, such as 2xx for successful, 3xx for redirects, 4xx for client errors, or 5xx for server errors. These codes can be used to redirect users to different parts of your application, or provide users a specific response code based on the reason they were blocked by AWS WAF. You can also optionally define custom response headers to be inserted to the original response header in the custom response back to the client. You can also optionally define a custom response body in the custom response back to the client. When we study the order of precedence for custom responses, the custom responses that you specify for the AWS WAF block rule action will always take precedence over any response specifications that you define in your protected resource. Something to note is that your AWS WAF must be configured to allow your web request true in order for your protected resource custom response to respond back to your client. You can then define custom responses in your protected resources, like for example, with Amazon CloudFront, you can customize the error page based on the status code. And with Amazon API Gateway, you can define the response and status code for your gateway. If none of these custom responses is specified and the web request is blocked by AWS WAF, the AWS WAF will return a default block response of 403 forbidden back to the client. Let's look at the use cases for AWS WAF custom responses. The use cases include sending a non-default status code back to the client, sending a static error page back to the client, redirecting the client to a different URL. Let's see all these use cases in action. Now, for demonstration purpose, I have created a custom application that resides behind an application load balancer, and my AWS WAF is enabled and tightly integrated with this application load balancer that resides in North Virginia region. As you can see here, I've got a web ACL named WAF Demo residing in the North Virginia region. And when I click on associated AWS resources, I can see the application load balancer that is associated with my AWS WAF Web ACL WAF demo. This AWS WAF is currently protecting my application load balancer that's residing behind the WAF. Let's look at my AWS WAF Web ACL rules. My default Web ACL action is to block all requests that's going to my application load balancer that don't match any rules. I have a rule here named demo rule one. In this rule, I'm currently allowing all requests with URI path matching a forward slash public string. Now, Let's access my custom application with the URI path forward slash public string. As you can see, my AWS WAF demo rule one has allowed my web request true. And you can see that my custom web application is returning this, are you a human web page? Remember this web page? And let's go back to edit our rule. I'll click on edit and this time I'm going to change the action to block 
and save the rule. So let's save our rule. And I'm going to access my custom application again. I'll just hit on refresh. So we can observe that when no custom response is specified by my AWS WAF or my custom application or protected resource, AWS WAF will return a default block response 403 forbidden back to the client. Let's explore the three use cases I mentioned earlier in detail. Now I'm going to edit my demo rule one. And this time, I'm going to enable custom response. So I'm going to give it a response code 404 not found and click save. So I've saved my custom response with a non-default status code of 404 not found. Let's access my custom application again. I'm going to open a terminal and do a call to the address. And as you can see, instead of returning a 403 forbidden, this time, as expected, our AWS WAF has returned a non-default 404 not found status code. So previously, it returns the default block 403 forbidden response. Now, let me edit the demo rule one rule again. I'm going to show you the second use case, right, where I can specify a custom response body. Now, to specify a custom response body, I must first define it. And to define it, I need to go to custom response body to create a custom response body. And I can choose to define a JSON HTML or plain text custom response body. For demonstration purpose, I have pre-created a HTML custom response that looks like this. So I've given it a name custom dash response and this is how the body looks like. After I have defined a custom response body, I can use it by reference anywhere in the web ACL or rule group where I want to use it. Let's go ahead to edit my demo rule one to use this custom response body that I've just defined. So I can select the custom response, custom dash response. Yep, this is the custom response body that I have created earlier. And I'm going to give it a response code this time of 500, which is internal server error. And I'm going to save it. Now that I've saved my rule, I'm going to try to access my custom application again. And this time, you can see that I'm receiving a custom response of 500 internal server error. And as expected, we can also see that our AWS WAF has responded with our custom response body. Website is temporarily unavailable. I can also view this response in, in my browser. So yes, as you can see, website is temporarily unavailable. Now I want to demonstrate the last use case, which is to redirect a client to a different URL. I shall edit my demo rule one again to block with custom response enabled. And this time 
I want to change the custom response code to 302 move temporary and to include a custom response header containing the key name location and the value is a forward slash no trust as the key value and I'm going to click save now let's access our custom application again so the same URL I'm going to refresh it and this time you can see that our web request has been redirected to another URL ending with forward slash no trust and to view the custom response headers of our web request let's run the call command you can see it has returned the HTTP status code of 302 move temporary this is a non-default HTTP status code we can also see that our AWS WAF has inserted a new header named location with the new URI forward slash no trust this result matches exactly what I have configured in my demo rule one action earlier finally in our web ACL we can also specify the custom response for the default web ACL block rule action if we want so we can click on edit and this is where we can also enable a custom response for our default web ACL block rule action and that's it I have demonstrated to you how you can leverage this custom response feature from AWS WOLF to send custom responses back to the client when a web request is blocked thank you for your time and make sure to consult the AWS WOLF documentation for more information on custom responses for block actions.